What is going on everyone? My name is Mehul and welcome to another YouTube video in which we're gonna get deep into React and Angular and what you should do in 2019 because the year is about to end and there's all this hype now what you should do as a web developer, what you should learn and uh, I just realized that it's important to actually let people know what React Angular are, what are the differences, you should, should you go with React or should you learn Angular if you're just jumping in or even if you have like done a couple of frameworks, small frameworks, which one should you pick up next because honestly these two frameworks are kind of hot right now but we're gonna take a look at what are all of these nits and gits differences and this is not going to be on the surface, I'm gonna get a little bit deep as well on both of these frameworks so let's get into it so <clears throat> react first of all let me just clear out that react actually is a library right we're gonna come to that what I mean by a library and not a framework it has 120k github stars which is which means that this project is quite popular 1.2k contributors which obviously means it's quite active apart from Facebook supporting it backed by Facebook as I say so react was actually launched back in 2013 if you don't realize it so it's yeah it's quite old so it's like uh, how many years now um, five years so yeah five years and six years you can say because it's almost 2019 now so angular on the other hand is uh, actually a framework and we're gonna get to that what's the difference it is not really as popular as React, but it's still catching up with 45k GitHub stars and 800 contributors. But the big, big advantage here is it's backed by Google, which is obviously a bigger company than Facebook. But uh, it's, you know, Google can not really get into developer space as long as it does not create a very good rival to React, which I think Angular kind of is. But gonna take a look at that so Google launched angular and by angular I mean the angular 2 and above angular JS was something similar but you know angular 2 kind of changed a lot of stuff right angular 2 brought like you know disastrous changes to not really disastrous but you know extreme changes to the language the syntax how you write stuff how angular processes your digest cycles you know renders updates stuff like that so angular 2 was quite a mature step towards a framework than angular js right so coming to a quote here i would not really a quote but just a statement that comparing to react comparing react to angular is actually not really fair now we're gonna cover why that is so because again the answer lies in whatever you have read so far that React is a library, Angular is a framework. You cannot really compare a library with a framework. But because obviously you need to make a choice, we have to proceed, right? We are going to come at a conclusion. And actually I'm going to get into how to do this as a fair comparison as well. So, number one, React is just a rendering library, if you think about it. So what you're doing with React essentially is you're writing a bunch of code. React says, hmm, okay, well, this is the component, this is uh, its code, this is its JSX, I need to just render it and that's it. That's the job of React as a UI rendering library, right? On the other hand, if you take a look, Angular is a full-fledged full -fledged framework. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you can say that Angular provides a lot of stuff out of the box. If you're coming to React, you would, you're going to definitely say that. But actually a framework has to provide all that stuff, which Angular does provide, right? So for example, if you want to use a good state management in React, Redux is the, you know, I can say the standard way of going with state management, right? There are obviously other solutions available, but Redux is one of the most popular, or rather I should say most popular solution available for React. Now obviously you can use Redux with Angular as well, but a framework should provide, you know, state management inbuilt, 
things like HTTP requests. Angular actually runs on observables, so you can subscribe to events, you know, do a hell lot of stuff with observables, right? And other utilities which Angular provides out of the box, singletons, services, stuff like that. React does not provide any of that because it's just a library for rendering components. Angular, on the other hand, provides you a complete environment for development, right? Another thing uh, I've seen a lot of developers talk about is uh, they kind of make use of virtual DOM as a comparison point for React and Angular. <clears throat> so what happens basically is people often confuse that virtual DOM is actually faster than real DOM. Well, that's, that might be the case, but that's not really something which would impact performance. Not unless you are rendering a million divs, not really a million, but like, let's say a hundred thousand divs or something. Because DOM actually is fast. It is a misconception that DOM is slow. It is only when you're changing a lot of elements without actually considering which element should change, then DOM updations become slow. So for example, let's say if you want to change a nested, a very nested text element. If you change the whole parent of it, then obviously that's gonna be slow. But if you just change that particular text node, then it's gonna be super fast. Whether you do it from DOM or whether you calculate the differences in virtual DOM and then basically, you know, apply those differences. So anyway, I'm just gonna get to a little misconception here. That is the differences between, you know, why people confuse uh, just a second virtual DOM with shadow DOM. So what happens? Let me just first of all explain what virtual DOM is. So what happens exactly is basically virtual DOM you can think of is as a representation of your original DOM, but in JavaScript. Now why does this help us? Because JavaScript can obviously access itself much much faster than an API exposed by browser to access the tree created by the HTML DOM, right? So that's why I say is virtual DOM is a JS representation of the actual DOM, right? So what happens with virtual DOM is that whenever you make a change to a React component, that change is actually not done on the real DOM, it's first of all done on the virtual DOM. Then there's a difference calculated from virtual DOM, from first state of virtual DOM to the previous state and whatever the differences are only those particular areas in real DOM are updated and you can obviously think of the benefits here just like I told you you don't do unnecessary updates to DOM so that kind of makes sense you know on the other hand people somehow confuse I don't know why shadow DOM with virtual DOM shadow DOM is nothing but basically an abstraction an encapsulation of data it's not really related to performance but you know, I think it introduces some sort of performance benefits, but it's not really meant for that anyway, right? So what happens with Shadow DOM is uh, actually, for example, when you embed a video in HTML5 with a video tag, you not only get a video, but also a pause button, let's say a settings gear, you know, stuff like that, which makes it easy for you to continue your work without actually coding the player itself. So all those buttons are actually hidden inside the uh, shadow dom right and if you if you can access that shadow dom you would be able to style them you would be able to position them stuff like that so that's shadow dom right it's not really related to virtual dom although they kind of share the same terminology but okay so the question is if angular does not use virtual dom then how does it detect changes so let's get into it how does angular do that well <laughs> it actually just patches most of the APIs which are exposed to you as an end user, as a developer. All right, so what happens with Angular is that instead of using a virtual DOM, which I think they do use now, I'm not really sure, they use virtual DOM for some things, but uh, what essentially they do is they patch the low-level APIs actually provided by zone.js so there's a file called zone it's not really a file it's a complete repository but zone.js basically what it does is it patches by patch what i mean is actually replacing the original stuff with the, obviously what it's supposed to do 
but with some additional stuff, right? So what happens here is basically, for example, take this example of add event listener. Add event listener, you know that you know adds an event listener to whatever you whatever DOM element you provide and executes that callback once that event is fired by the browser. So Angular, instead of like letting it go, actually, you know, sits in between of the call to that event. And then, you know, it says that if that particular piece of UI is changed, then it wants to re-render that UI part, right? First of all, it gets the change, Angular 2.run change detection, which is their, you know, change mechanism. They can just compare, you know, do a not deep comparison of objects of dom nodes whatever they want to do under the under the hood but now they actually have uh you know a place to actually run their code so they don't have like you set timeouts or stuff like that so angular detects the change with its uh, methods and stuff if it's changed then it re-renders that particular ui part and that's how angular works right in a nutshell all right let's come to learning curve now so we're done with the basic fundamental differences, but uh, hmm, what? how difficult is it to learn Angular or React? Well, starting off with React, it's pretty easy to start, I would say, if you have like a basic knowledge of JavaScript as well, JavaScript and ES6, you would be able to pick up um, React pretty quickly, right? It has a low learning curve for sure, you can get up and uh, start writing some components uh, you know in a minute with stuff like create react app it's basically a breeze to get started with react and understand it but the thing with react is it requires a lot of other libraries if you want to create a good project right because again it's not a framework it doesn't provide this all by itself for example for even for making http requests you either have to go native that is use fetch provided by javascript or use a framework like a library like Axios or for state management, you can use Redux, stuff like that. Angular, on the other hand, for that, for to learn that, you need to know TypeScript, which kind of is a pain in the ass for some people in the beginning. Angular also has a steeper learning curve than React because remember, you're working with a lot of stuff here. Once you are into a framework, you kind of have to like, at least know everything how it's working and how everything goes in place you cannot ignore those bits and pieces which you are which you have to see like on a daily basis right and part of that is because it's full flesh framework right you cannot blame it it has to be that much complex right to in order to be a full fleshed framework so let's see which company is using what not really a fan of that but still i'm gonna list it React is actually used by a lot of companies, trust me. Netflix uses it, Facebook obviously uses it, Instagram uses it, Airbnb uses it, and a lot of companies, other companies as well uses it. But uh, React Native is also something which is emerging as a as an ecosystem to be used, right? A lot of companies are actually using React Native as well, which is built, not really built by because of react but it's yeah kind of built on the top of react right so react is actually quite popular among businesses as a standard de facto way to build scalable applications right angular on the other hand is uh, <laughs> kind of not not so you know they're right now in the industry but it's still kind of catching up right people are trying to build stuff seeing how it scales Angular team is uh, working as well. They're working out in so hard that they're kind of like releasing a new version every six months. <laughs> I don't know why those guys are doing that. So Angular 7 recently came out like a week ago, maybe. So yeah, that's, I don't know why they're, they're already at Angular 7. Maybe they want to reach React 16. <laughs> Not really sure. But anyway, Angular is also catching up with the companies not really i don't have a lot of big names right now for angular to list other than google itself but uh, yeah let's see how it goes on so the question of the hour which one you should choose i'll give you 30 seconds to think about it 
No, not really. Let's just do it. Well, obviously, it's clear you should go with jQuery. Both of these frameworks are kind of like useless. Whatever you can do with jQuery is, you know, you absolutely just need jQuery. Right? Thanks for watching. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. So, if we consider React as the winner. So, React is easy. Document support. Actually, one of the reasons I missed React was not so popular before because it has it had a horrible documentation, right? So React was a very good thing, but uh, it lacked documentation, so a lot of people would not were not able to use it. But since then, back uh, you know, it's it's about like a one and a half year to two years ago thing. But since then, a lot of things are improved. React has a very good documentation now. There are conferences held every year all around the world on React where people guide people to how to use that. Stuff like that happens. You're in obviously in good company. Companies like Airbnb heavily do work on React and they have done work on React Native in the past as well. Heavy work which is obviously open source and for use for all de developers, right? Now, I listed that React is just a library not a full fresh framework but which, which kind of is like fine with me as well right because you know i get to choose bits and pieces of what i want to use and what i don't want to use right with angular you can do that as well but uh, you know you kind of are stuck in a framework which is good for a lot of things but you know might not be comfortable for a lot of things either right so yeah i think that's a good thing with react Angular, on the other hand, it's actually growing pretty fast, right? It, it was just launched in 2016 and, uh, you know, it cannot, it is growing pretty good, but you cannot expect a framework to disrupt the whole industry so soon. You know, Vue is there, but, you know, kind of Angular is, okay. Angular is okay-ish, but on a personal level, I think uh, Google has a little bit over engineered angular honestly but let's see where it goes i'm i'm interesting to see where angular actually goes in the next couple of years angular is uh, kind of like in the process of establishing itself as a good framework to be used as a stable framework and uh, i would say it's doing good right now it's not really in a condition where you could say like just drop angular and start with the frameworks if you're doing angular stick with it it's gonna make a blow, trust me. Um, it uh, Because it's a framework, it provides strict coding guides, what should do where, services should be this, you know, modules should be this. React sometimes gives too many options to developers. For example, you can achieve a one thing using a thousand ways using React, right? So this kind of creates bad coding practices. But Angular kind of has a fixed not really a fix, but more or less, it's 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 very straightforward way of doing stuff. Not not to be confused with like you don't have a lot of options, but you know you have guidelines to do how to do stuff, right? So this is where Angular wins. So I guess that's it. But if you're still confused, screw both of them. Go with Vue.js, <laughs> right? So we have like another player. Vue is also one of the frameworks right now trust me the only three frameworks i would uh, rather s recommend anyone to use are just react angular and Vue. so Vue is like uh, it's it's pretty basic pretty easy to use if you are like uh, have used angular or react in the past and you're still confused don't know your way around I'd rather say just go with Vue because it has a learning curve even easier than React, right? So, yeah, Vue is the way to go if you are not able to understand React or Angular, as a matter of fact. But I still recommend going with, the, you know, as a personal opinion, I worked a lot, a lot, lot more with React than with Angular. So I'm going to obviously recommend React with that. But I've still worked with Angular, remember that. And I think Angular is not really a very good choice for your first framework or even for your second framework in JavaScript. Try out JavaScript a little bit, you know, taste the stuff. 
see how JavaScript actually works, learn about stuff like decorators, TypeScript, you know, new things introduced in ES6, ES7, ES8, ES9 is also around the corner. So yeah, a lot of stuff going on. So I think I might be able to help. I was able to help in this video. And if yes, then don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon below to be updated with uh, stuff like this. And uh, I'll see you then in some other video. Goodbye.